another project at Bethel University and the cur a curator of, um, of a photo festival in the Swiss Alps called um, Alt, 1000. Alt 1000 asked to do asked me to do something in the Swiss Alps so I actually did a Google search of Swiss Alps um, and then I also got um, a lot of Sound of Music mountains which are not in the Swiss Alps but I decided you know when you do a Google search and you call it Swiss Alps and then you get Sound of Music then it has to be included <laughs> So I called this project Moving Mountains, because I've called it all Moving Mountains or Mountains Moving, um, because I like this kind of idea of the mountain going from one time to another. Um, and then um, of Swiss Alps and Sound of Music, and then we made billboards of the, of the images. So these are actually site. People look at these and think I digitally inserted these images in there, but these are actually my, my photographs of the installation in the Swiss Alps. Site-specific billboards. Site-specific billboards. Yeah. And, um, and I wanted to write an app so that people coming to this place in the Alps could take a photograph. And, um, and if they took a photograph of you know, the mountain, it would, the app would have a kind of um, peak recognition and take the peak of the mountain and flip it upside down and invert the color. And I did a little research on app writing, and it was going to cost like a real lot of money. So I decided to do this public um, talk, this public um, intervention, which basically asks, it's a kind of um, uh, fictional proposal about a mountain and a smartphone trading information. And um, so I proposed to the people reading this at the site, this, this sort of lookout that they they think about the technology and they think about the sort of iconic mountain image that we all know and that they make iconic image mount, Im, images of the mountain without the idea of feeling like they're authoring a special, you know, their own special view of it, but with an idea of contributing to the iconic vocabulary of the mountain. And, um, and then uh, to take a picture, send it to me. At this, they gave me an email address for the um, thing. And then I would send them back a um, my iPhone processed image, and the whole thing would take place in iPhone to iPhone or, or smartphone to I to smartphone, really. Um, and I thought I'd get like 12 people, and um, 650 people responded. So I'm still working on this. This was last June. So this is an example of like a screen grab of um, like this is one screen grab. And this is what we're looking at. This is the process of you running any particular image through right. a series of apps. Right. So this is the first image here. And then I processed it and then sent them. I processed, processed it until it got to about here and this one. And I thought, oh, actually, I just really like this one. <laughs> so I sent them that one. And then this one I also processed till it got to here. And I think I might have sent, I can't remember which one I sent here. Um, there's another example. There's one um, that I just did a lot of. I just didn't like any of them, and then I sort of went back and got the image again and did some more. So sometimes they took me like an hour to do, and sometimes they, they took me um, like five minutes. And then the, um, I think I have some images of, let's see, let's zoom out here a little bit. This is an example of the ones, these are what I sent back. So, um, I just put these together. Um, well, and then yeah. it continues. The collaboration continues, right? So there's now an additional option for right, yeah. further. So uh, I'm asking people as they send them back if they want to be a part of a print edition. They can send me a print. They, they should make two prints, um, any, any size, any, uh, on any paper, glossy, matte, whatever, um, any kind of print um, process. Um, and um, send me one, and then I will send them a certificate of authenticity that they have number one in an edition of two. Um, and so then I have basically, if 650 people did that, I would have an exhibition of 650 you have a different big exhibition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, probably not. They probably won't all do it, but yeah, it would be really great. But you've gotten yeah. you've gotten some. I mean, yeah, you've gotten, gotten about 10 or 15. So right. yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's a funny thing because uh, you're starting off with this sort of circulating image, but then you're reducing it down to a printed 
addition of two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, that that again that kind of tension is sort of built in. Right. Um, one of the things um, that I'm also interested in talking about, um, you've worked for you know quite a long time with images that come from you know all kinds of sources online and, and catalogs, mail order catalogs, this kind of thing. Um, the one of the pieces that, that did show here was the Craigslist televisions, mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious to hear you um, speak a little bit about um, you, the the idea of what the photograph is sort of necessarily recording and the, and mm -hmm. the, the, the kinds of records that the photograph is making, intentionally or unintentionally. Right. Um, should I, uh, maybe I'll, I'll start with this project. Um, I want to back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like okay. with, the, yeah. with these? Sure. Um, this was, um, it's actually, a, it was a, a standalone website at some point where um, um, I was thinking about these armoires on home improvement websites and um, how they're all so perfect. Um, and if you had an armoire like this, it probably wouldn't be, you know, like if you were interested in buying an armoire, um, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't look like this in your home. You, you, would, you would want it in order to, you know, clean up all your clutter. There'd be a lot of clutter inside it. So I, I created this website where it's no longer a standalone because I didn't pay for the registration of it. But uh, so it's now on my website. But uh, I started with a um, Pottery Barn, I think it's the Pottery Barn armoire, and um, and then on Craigslist found as many different um, versions of it as I could. And then um, as you click through the website, you go from one to the next to the next, and they start to get more and more um, messy, messy and decrepit. <laughs> And my idea was that if you wanted an armoire to clean up your crap, you know, you would, you might come upon this website looking for one, and then you get to this point and you go, okay, it's not really going to help. But, um, <laughs> and that's what the project really was about. But then I, but then I started to like go, like I was thinking, this is crazy. Like, um, this. Oh wait a minute, it's going the wrong way. <laughs> I want it to come this way. Um, this person who's like selling this armoire, like, how is this? Like, you can't even see the armoire, right? And um, but you, what you can see is you can see these little pictures, and you can see how busy the person is, and you can see the coffee cup here, and um, there's like a person here, and in this one you can see all their clothes, and in this one there's like I guess that's like I think that's like a pinup image here, you know, you, you get to see like the private lives of these people. And um, at, at this point, I'm starting to think, well, actually, even though people are saying they want to sell their armoires, really what they're doing is they're trying to make a connection to an anonymous public, or they're trying to, to, um, to show some kind of personal presence online. And I thought it was kind of um, like a subconscious urge for presence. And this was the one that um, really got me thinking because the, not only is the armoire kind of, it's not the same armoire as the other ones, but not only is it messy and like there's whatever dirty laundry on the television, but in the television there's a flash. And that flash actually is the, um, the presence of the photographer, of the seller. Like that actually indicates the, the seller there. Um, in that reflection. And so I, I was thinking about the reflection. I, I was thinking about a few things. One is um, there's, oh, here, I have like all the armoires in the website here. You can see how they get messier and messier. But um, one of the things that I was thinking about was this phenomenon of um, reflecto porn. Um, I'm curious if other people have heard of it. Has like anybody heard of reflecto porn? No. no. <laughs> One. One. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, it was this phenomenon um, on eBay that um, people were posting um, things for sale. Oh, this on, was on eBay. This was on okay. eBay. And um, it's called reflecto porn because people caught on to it and then I guess people have just called it that. But um, eBay 
had to get sensors to, to check. I think this is maybe the beginning of when they started to have people looking and making sure that there weren't like really, I don't know, hidden things messages, going on. secrets, yeah, right. right, as you called them. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so in this one there's a woman here. This one doesn't seem that weird, but like this one, there's a naked person here. <laughs> and then this is a close-up of a guitar pickup, and then in the pickups there's this guy so, um, and I'm reminded, you know, thinking about this, there's also this Craigslist Mirrors, which I think is really a great Tumblr. It's really like... And this is not your work. This, this is, is not This my has been work. making the rounds on yeah. social media lately. This is not my work either, right? Like, right. These are just things that I'm thinking about and thinking um, how similar or different. Uh, so this is Craigslist Mirrors, and this guy just has a Tumblr and is posting all the mirrors that he finds on Craigslist for sale where there's something funny going on. Um, and you see the reflection of the person. But one thing that I, uh, the reason I'm showing these is that they're inherently completely the opposite of what I'm interested in because anybody selling this mirror knows that he or she is being reflected in here. Um, the nature of the mirror is a reflective medium and um, some, sometimes they're funny, but you know they don't care, but they know that they're there. So mm -hmm. what I was interested in was um, this inadvertent presence, like this presence um, where it's for the sale of the, maybe it's for the sale of the television, or maybe it's for the sale of the armoire, but inside this reflection is, is something. Um, so I started to collect all the, <laughs> this, is, this is a sampling of maybe, this is like 0.1% of what, I, what I've been collecting. Um, at first it was just televisions that had um, flashes in them, but um, my work is so um, dependent on the technologies that people are using so that as, as camera technology has gotten better and better, I've been able to find more and more information in these images. So I started off, this is actually... Wait, what, is, what do you mean? How is that? What's well, gotten better? Um, this iPhone has like an 8 megapixel oh, camera. Oh, I see. So it's recording more right. in the reflection. And okay. in 2008, it had, you know, cell phones or the cameras were like 2 megapixel. So, um, so this is earlier work. This may have been in the show that was here, actually, because yeah. this is the installation that was at Aperture. Um, and then, um, but now, okay, so I have this piece that I made specifically for this presentation, for this, for this, for this program. So this is an image of all the TVs that I've collected so far. And um, we can go into it. And one of the things that I love about this project is that I start to feel really voyeuristic. I, I go into other people, I go into cities, and then when I'm searching on Craigslist for the TVs in cities, um, I'm basically, in, it feels like I'm being invited into people's bedrooms and living rooms to, um, you know, so in their TVs, I'm finding, um, you know, things like this. This, yeah. this is a bed. There's, there's a, you know, a guy. Some of them, so these are the kinds of images I was first finding, and then I started to be able to find, um, like, images like this, you know, where you're getting a lot of detail. And I really love, I, I love the, the kind of privacy of, um, you know, this kind of privacy. There's a really, phenomenal, like, uh, oh, no, no, go this way. Sorry, if anybody's getting seasick, please tell me. I have no idea what it looks like over there. <laughs> like there's some, stop, oh, I have to stop clicking. All right, I'm trying to get to this guy with this, this messy bed and um, oh, that's the edge of this image. Do you guys see what? <laughs> I mean, I, the the thing about the reflecto porn started to become true as I've start as I've done this for so long. I'm starting to find these kinds of images, and yeah. Well, and it brings up an interesting question about intentionality, right? right. Like, to what degree are you know, you've, you, you're interested in this idea that maybe people are putting, you know, sort of subconsciously putting out 
an image of their private lives right. in this public realm. And I, and I think this is maybe an interesting segue into a, a sort of conversation about um, the, the nature of, of space online. And this right, is something right. that we've been talking about in um, the class that I'm doing now is how we sort of conceptualize or imagine um, the, what that is, when, when the online space, and, and the degree of uh, publicness that it, that it is. And mm -hmm. um, one of the students made a comment that, you know, it's, it's online space is public space, right? So it's like being a street photographer, you right. know, and, and you, can, you can take anything because it's all public space, right? right. Like in the way that you would um, take a, take a, you know, a be photograph a street on the street, take right. a photograph on the street, right. exactly. Um, and so I'm curious to know, and you've obviously spent a lot of time mm -hmm. um, looking at images online and going through various types of online public space. Um, and, I, and I actually think you do draw a distinction between more, more public parts of public online mm -hmm. space and mm -hmm. more private parts right. that are also public. Anyway, could you? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that I'm, you, um, I'm interested in those spaces that people um, make public. Like, I guess I'm not, you know, we were talking about Mark Edelman's work a little bit, but, you know, but just somebody who did work um, ab about individuals and how individuals are playing, um, playing to the camera. And I guess what's interesting to me about this was, um, is um, that every single person posting a photograph here is publicly posting that photograph, and it's in a public space like Craigslist, um, but it's of a private place, and um, which is very different than someone doing something private in public and then posting it into mm -hmm. a private space. Well, you know, that's or, different than sunsets as well, which right, are often, public and public yeah, community yeah. experiences. Right, mm -hmm. right. So I guess I was, you know, I was interested in this idea of almost like blow up, you know, that the movie blow up, like going in and in and in the photograph to find some evidence of something. But in this case, it's going into a kind of intimate space rather than a public space. Mm -hmm. and, um, but that people are willingly putting those images on a public, in a public forum, so there's no, there's no issues of privacy boundaries there. And these people are all, I mean, there's no, um, nobody here, well, first of all, nobody in any of these images would be recognizable. Because the because of what the surface of the television does, so they remain anonymous, and um, I guess that anonymity is something that I'm really interested in, mm -hmm. um, or interested, but also rely on in order to not feel like I'm ethically violating any rule, any rules of privacy, or you know. Right, because there's the there is that the one um, piece of the sons the sons work that um, where rec there are recognizable right. individuals. Right. Um, and and you actually even well you, do you credit them in the exhibition um, the um, photo streams that the, those images are yeah, from yeah I can't remember whether I credited them in the exhibition these um, so these are images well you you can describe it better it'd be yeah, you want me to? Uh, well, okay. yeah. Well, well no, okay. So it. these are images that after um, the um, the sun's piece is exhibited. Uh, uh, people who are visiting the museum, there's a there's a tendency to, and I can sort of vouch for this, to kind of want to like hang around in front of these installations because they're big and warm and happy and beautiful and everyone's in a good mood, and you get your picture taken in front of the the sunsets, and then people will put them back up on Flickr, and Penelope finds them and uh, reprints them out and sort of uh, pulls them into her own image right. production. So this is an example of like. Um, someone had asked today when I was talking about this why I, I said Steve Rudd's photo stream, which is a way of crediting the origin, the photographer who took this photograph. Um, but it was I had done it actually because I thought it was interesting that these guys also, uh, these are not Steve Rudd's photo stream. These are the result of these guys' as photographs here. And um, I just like the kind of recursiveness of this this project. And I also felt like this is the one and only project that I've actually allowed people to be able to be identified because um, um, we were talking about this a little bit too, but you know, this is a place where these people are using my work as their sort of, you know, their, their sunset, so I can use their image to, you know, it's a documentation of my work, so. Um, but I, I also did a, been finding 
you know, things like this. So then she knows about this and she's doing this. And then, so I had this um, little project that I did where these are pictures of people taking pictures of my sunset, my sun installations. And then these are those pictures that these people took. And then these and those are. And you, you just sort of. I just out. found them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it started with this one image of um, um, in Australia. I found it on Flickr. Like someone had been there and taken a picture of it and posted it on Flickr, and then it's I a found nice it. Installation, sure. Yeah, it's great. Actually, I contacted him and I asked him for the large file, and I would give him credit. I use it as a publicity shot, and, um, it's, and he gets credit when it gets published. Um, but um, yeah, and then so these are pictures of people taking pictures of them of their loved ones in front of my thing, and then these are those pictures that those people took, and then these are pictures that people have taken of that, um, and it could keep Follow going on. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. Right. So in terms of um, you've worked both with online archives and online archives designed as archives and then sort of inadvertent online archives but also physical archives and as far as your working process does it does it make a difference to you where the images you know the, the sort of degree of physicality that the images have at the start you know if you're looking at the if you're at the Smithsonian mm. looking at, pr at prints, prints or at reproductions of right. prints as physical objects right. versus um, well, um, I'm trying to get back to the mountains. Because mm -hmm. um, what I was going to say was that we're going through all the bodies of work here. Um, where are they? OK. Um, the, the Bethel image, so Bethel uh, University asked me to do an installation as well. And they sent me digital files of um, uh, an archive of, of travel pictures they had 